Well, I'm glad that gospel big, that book is so big. It's heavy. But the letters are big because I forgot my glasses. Wow. So before we enter into the readings of the day, we need to, once again, as our theme talks about, come in and rest. For though you may be weary, he takes the burden and walks with us along the journey. And these flames of life speak of hope. And at times, at least for me and maybe sometimes others, it may be hard to find hope. There may be moments of disillusionment. But because of who we are, Sometimes we put on a good face. Yeah? You've all done it as people and families and church. You know things are serious, and yet for the children, you put on a good face. You say the right words of comfort and consolation as you're praying yourself that all will be well. Sometimes you even have to lead the parade. Yet as the years go by, sometimes the dreams diminish. And sometimes as we look at the glass, I know for myself at times I think it's, it's half empty. It's not a good feeling, but it is what it is because times are hard. But it's at moments like that that we look to those around us to give us hope. So during this season of Advent, we lift up these people. These are the icons, and there are so many more people whose lives illuminate hope. They are beacons of light. And they share their life of faith with us so that we can light our own particular path on our unique journey. For it is better to follow our particular path than to succeed in the path of another and not be happy or content. Okay? It's better to follow your own path and it may be a challenge and it may be difficult, but if it's your path, you will find an inner peace and contentment. If it's someone else's path, even if you do succeed, you're not going to happen. I remember in school, my daddy was in finance, and he made sure that all of us understood finance. So I took a class in finance, and after six weeks, I didn't know what side was a credit or a debit. <laughs> I still don't know when I dropped the class. But the idea there is that I was taking it from my dad. And yes, it probably would have been good if I knew what side of credit or debit was. But I wasn't taking it for myself. And so it's more important to follow our own path with that hope of others to guide us than to take another path and maybe succeed financially but be empty inside. So on this, these images, we have one back here of Dorothy Day of New York. Dorothy Day, okay? She was co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement back in the 
1932 during the Depression. She opened up soup kitchens for those who had lost their jobs in New York, started farms, and basically looked at a society and said, you're putting your money in the wrong place. You're not putting it in the people. And so Dorothy is that woman of simplicity. And she died on the 29th of November, the day this year after Thanksgiving. So what, was, what were so many of us doing the day after Thanksgiving? Shopping. So here it is, on this great day of shopping, in which the church has as its memorial a person who says, it's not about what you buy. It's about the person in front of you. She was a pacifist. She believed in peace. And so she said, over and over again, people had to disobey the law to follow the voice of conscience. Amen. She did. All right. Um, she was arrested in front of the White House in 1919 for the vote for women. She said, this obedience to God and disobedience to the state has over and over again happened throughout history. And it is time and again, it is time to cry out against our leaders to question whether or not they are sane. Dorothy said this years ago, and you notice she did not say, <coughs> she said, since it is not for us to say they are evil. Dorothy was not a person who was going to judge another. She just asked if they were sane. Okay? Okay, so basically I'm looking at, at this past week, December 1st, 1955. Montgomery, Alabama. Mrs. Rosa Parks was arrested after refusing to give up her seat on a public bus to a white man. She stood up for civil rights while sitting down on a bus. And Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said of her, for nobody can doubt the boundless outreach of her integrity. Nobody can doubt the height of her character. And nobody can doubt the depth of her Christian commitment and her devotion to Jesus Christ. This was a woman who stood up while sitting down. She turned the world upside down in a simple action. She was true to who she was. And Mayor Steve Reed, the first African-American mayor in the former capital of the Confederacy, said, her moment born out of faith was a pilot light for a movement that would overcome fear. I mean, we're not talking about having a huge torch, a big light. All we need to do is be a pilot light for one another. Five days later, at Hope Street Baptist Church, Dr. Martin Luther King was the eve of something that was going to turn the world upside down, and he knew it. He knew it. Because at that time, they were, the people said that if we can't sit on the bus, a public bus, wherever we want, we're not going to take the bus at all. <laughs> and the boycott began. It was nonviolent. 
It was founded in the church. It was founded on respect and human dignity. And he said, and we are not wrong in what we are doing. If we are wrong, the Supreme Court of this nation is wrong. If we are wrong, the Constitution of the United States is wrong. If we are wrong, God Almighty is wrong. If we are wrong, Jesus of Nazareth was merely a utopian dream who never came down to earth. If we are wrong, justice is a lie and love has no meaning. And we are determined here in Montgomery to work and to fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. That was the hope of the prophets of our day in 1955. And that was from the prophet Amos. In the midst of difficulty, the pilot light of hope is still alive. And on December 5th, 2013, Nelson Mandela died. He was a prophet and a leader of state. He was reminding us that part of hope, part of this Advent hope, is all about waiting. And he said, I am fundamentally an optimist. Whether it comes from nurture or nature, I do not know. But being an optimist is keeping one's head pointed towards the sun and one's feet moving forward. An optimist. Keep the, the eyes focused on the sun and the feet still walking forward. And Nelson knew this because he struggled long and hard. 18 of the 27 years in prison, he was on Robbins Island, coast of South Africa, in a small cell. The floor was his bed, a bucket, and forced labor in a quarry. And he still had hope. He says Advent is, also speaks of peace. Because Mandela was a peacemaker. He believed that one day the wolf shall be the guest of the lamb and that the lion would lie down with the kid. He said, if you want to make peace with your enemy, you have to work with your enemy. Then they become your partner. The building of alliances and networks are crucial for the building up of the kingdom. And like Martin, who was also a peacemaker, realized it wasn't going to happen like that. He says, I've walked that long road of freedom. I have tried not to falter, but I've made missteps along the way. Haven't we all, church? But I have a secret that after climbing the great hill, one only finds that there's more hills beyond. I have taken a moment here to rest. That's what we're doing here today, church. We've taken a moment to rest and to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds us, to look back on the distance where we've come from. But I can only rest for a moment. For with freedom comes responsibility, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not ended. 
My long walk has not ended. And Advent is a sign and a season of hope. And his opposition to our apartheid landed him into jail. But it never took his sense of humor. He smiled and said, in my country, we go to prison first and then become president. <laughs> Nelson said that. I did. Nelson did. I just found it. But it didn't make it easy. But Nelson was able to, to find joy even in the prison. But when he heard that his daughter had a baby, a granddaughter, and he saw her, he saw the future of his people in this little child and as was tradition it was the grandfather who named the children he said she will be called Zaziwe hope she would be the name of the hopeful future of our people and Advent points us to love for God is the source of love. And Nelson says, no one is born hating one another because of the color of their skin or their background or their religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can then be taught love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than the opposite. So these are just a week's worth of individuals who have shared their light to light our path. And you can name a bunch of other individuals in your own life that have given you that flame of hope so you could believe in yourself to journey on your particular path into God's kingdom. That sense of hope, we hear it from the prophet Isaiah. For at that time, 700 years plus BC, the Assyrians were circling about Jerusalem. And yet the writers of Isaiah held out that even during the darkest days, there would be light. There's that image that is used, that stump, that dried up stump that you cut down in your yard and there's no way you're going to dig out the roots because they're too big, cost too much. So you have that stump there. It's worthless. It's dead. It's dried up. That's what Israel felt like at this time. And yet, out of that stump, a shoot comes forth and a new tree comes forth an amazing image from despair to hope the image speaks of a new David who would listen to the poor and the marginalized and judge fairly and would be mindful it said of our afflictions that cry out, as Pope Francis says, because of the harm we have inflicted upon her by our irresponsible use and abuse of goods which God has endowed her of. To listen to the fringe, to the land. 
This is what the prophet Isaiah spoke about. This dream, this dream takes flesh in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed one. For this, well, we say king, but he never called himself a king, really. Surely not of, of this world. He turned the tables upside down because he extended his hands to the poor, to the woman, to the children, and to those on the fringe. It is he who, through his embrace of humanity, shares with us and brings to us the light of our own divinity. And so during the second and third week of Advent, we meet John, son of Elizabeth and Zachariah. Today he's out in the desert preaching a message of repentance. Next week he'll be in prison. John is called the forerunner because he prefigured Jesus, not only in the preaching of the kingdom of God, but the passion itself. Remember that when we talk of prophets, we don't talk about people who can imagine the future that this is what's going to happen on a particular day. A prophet is a person who speaks the truth. He's a teller, she's a teller of truth. And what John was saying is that the temple and the government were getting too close. Too close was Rome. And it hit the leadership in the temple. Maybe they sensed that they were a little too cozy up with the rich and the famous. So they went to get baptized. Maybe something in them called them to do this. But was it a real conversion on their part? Or was it a public relation ploy? Hmm. What did John call them? You brood of vipers. Also translated, snake bastards. I don't make it up. That's what those theological dictionaries tell you. So there's no, you have, a, you know, if you're being called brood of vipers and other things, well, when you're thrown into prison, don't expect any help from the Sadducees and the Sadducees. They just let him be with Herod. And he was beheaded. Another dimension of John was that, and this is important, and it's much like Mary, the same thing. He knew who he was. She knew who she was. And John knew the mission. Maybe it was all that time in the desert, in the silence, where he came to understand that he had to let go of his possessions. Any sense of power, vanity, and ego. Pope Francis said just this week, he said, the spirit chooses the small because the spirit cannot enter into the great, the proud, and the self-sufficient. Hmm. Life was not all about John the Baptist. Even though Jesus said in the Gospel of Luke, 
I assure you that there is no one born of woman greater than John. I mean, he could have had a great ego. But we heard today John saying, I am not worthy to carry his sandals. Well, that may not mean a whole bunch to us, but if we would go into the Middle East, Think about what it means to carry a sandal or touching your shoe. John knew who he was. Child of God and servant of God, just like Mary in that same way. The lack of ego. Jesus showed us that by emptying himself totally. That's the message. For as we are empty, we are full. Don't ask me how to explain it. We just know it's true. That when we move out from us, ourselves, when we go out in service to one another and forget ourselves and are mindful of the other, we walk away and we say, we've received more than we gave. That's what it's talking about. Dorothy Day did it, Rosa Parks did it, Martin Luther King Jr. did it, Nelson Mandela did it. Each of them came to know their dignity in Christ and that freed them to be real and to touch the power that was found deep within themselves. And they passed that light to each one of us like so many others have given us their light so that we could experience the God in self, in other, and in the God of creation. For they walked this planet like Jesus did, close to the people, lifting up the people, and reminding us that we are one family in the kingdom of God. And so with this vision, with Zaziwe, hope, we are marching into the light of God. light of God, we walk together in the journey as we proclaim our faith in a God who is within, working through, and beyond all. We believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus 
Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so as a community, on a 